Good morning, everyone. Hope you're all doing well. Today, I'm going to share with you a delicious roast that Erica and I enjoy, uh, either in sandwiches or you can just cut up a nice thick slice and eat it with some gravy or just on the side next to a nice big salad. It is an updated version of my pork roast, but when I tell you it's delicious, it's delicious. So let me show you how I make it. Start off with a food processor and it's really really simple to make you're gonna need okay we have a block of tofu that I am just simply gonna break up I feel like I'm in your face right okay let me see if I could zoom out a bit okay here we go we're just going to break up the tofu I just drained it, but if you want to soak it in some lemon juice, that's really up to you. I'm going to use just a little bit of vinegar to kill the taste of the vital gluten. I know someone messaged me and said, you know what, I love seitan, but I don't like the taste of the gluten. Well, you can use just a little vinegar and that's going to help. Okay, so we've got our gluten. Okay, we're going to put two tablespoons of mushroom powder. Here we go. And mushroom powder. All I do is I buy dry shiitake mushrooms. And I just blitz it up in a blender and I get all the powder I need and I barely made a dent in my mushroom bag and I have so much powder and you're gonna buy yourself the mushroom powder itself it is a little pricey so I would say buy the dry mushrooms you could go to any Asian grocery store that it is cheaper than if you go to one of these major grocery stores to buy mushrooms so any mushroom that you see there that's dry you can use once you turn it into a powder very very good if you have had my chicken recipe i have it up on i have it up on youtube if you follow that you can make a big batch of that i would say about two tablespoons of that i'm going to add to this some um, Vital wheat gluten. Okay, so I'm using, okay, I'm using a third cup for measuring. Now, like I said, my measuring is, I really don't have any specific uh, recipe, but what I do use, since I have it right in my jar, I always keep it in here. This is what I use to grab my flour, and that's what I'm going to use to measure it i'm going to use one two okay i'm going to do three to start off with and then if i need it if i find it's too wet i'm going to add a little extra have some ready if i need it more okay to this we're going to add some olive oil now I usually just kind of drizzle it like that. I would say three rounds of olive oil. Okay, I do the same thing with the maple. I just do about one round of maple. Okay, so one circle of maple, I would say, I would say about a tablespoon of maple syrup maybe. Yeah, so that would have been maybe three tablespoons of olive oil, but you could always use more. I will use a little extra olive oil later, and you'll see why. To this, we're going to add about half a cup of milk. I love using soy milk, but any milk you have, any vegan milk you have, is going to work for you. Here's my half cup. I mean, you can use water if you want. 
but I rather use milk. But if you want that and you don't have any milk on hand, simply use a little bit of water. Not a little bit, a half cup. And here is my vinegar. I use about a capful and apple cider vinegar. Uh, this is my own that I make. I just reuse the same bottle. Very simple if you want to know how to make apple cider vinegar. Simple, simple. I'm going to blend this up and I'll show you what it looks like. When your machine is overworking, just give it a pause, let it pause for a minute, two minutes, and then go at it again. You could also push down some of your ingredients if you have to, but it, it will eventually all come together without you having to uh, push your dough down or you'll see what I mean. I'm just going to feel it. I can see that this is still very wet. So I'm going to add just a little bit of Vital Wheat Gluten. Not even using a full amount. But it's going to help. Bring that together. Remember, if you want it very tender, just leave it at three of the one-third cups. But if you want to have it a little firmer like I do. I'm going to put more. It wasn't a full one-third cup. That's going to make it a little firmer for me. So I am going to go back in and mix this. Okay, you see how it's starting to form a ball, but that is still not how you want it. You want it where it's almost like a dough. This here is still crumbly, so make sure your hands are washed and just kind of break it up a little, and then it goes back in. I'd say about a tablespoon of mustard. Okay. Okay, I just want to show you now. Look at the way the dough ball looks. Take just a little bit of flour so it doesn't stick on my counter. If you have a marble counter, I'm sure you're good with just that. 
Okay. I'm going to keep that out because I need it. Our dough right onto it. Feels like a lot of work, but it really isn't. And guys, if you don't like me exp explaining my videos, maybe this is not a channel for you, but when I make something, I try to explain everything so this way your life is easier because you're going to know why I did what I did. So I leave it at that. Okay, we're going to try and flatten it. It's not going to get flattened, but I want to push it down as much as I can. And a lot of you are going to say, why do you make things that look like meat or it tastes like meat? Well, the flavors do. Uh, the flavor, flavors that you add to this roast reminds you, but it really isn't meat, so. But it is delicious. It fills you up. You have lots of protein in this. You've got the tofu, you've got the vital wheat gluten. Okay, this is as good as it's gonna get. Okay, so now, if you notice when you have pork meat, there's always a little bit of pink, that kind of little spots of pink. So what I'm gonna do here is first put a coating of olive oil. There we go. Let me just wash my hands, wipe down my hands. Okay. Now, if you have beetroot powder, add it to it. Just a little bit. You don't want a lot because you don't want this. Oh, that was way too much beetroot. You don't want this to turn red on you, but you want it that it kind of reminds you that how pork roast looks like it. I always had a little bit of red. Okay, and you can use fresh or you can use dry. I use dry because it's right next to me in my drawer. We're going to put some rosemary. We're going to make this delicious. This is no different like you're making a pork roast. Okay. We're going to get put that aside. Okay. So I've got a garlic clove. You don't need more than that. I could even use my fermented garlic. Mm. Just wanted the beating if I should use that instead. Okay, so we're going to just cut up this garlic in thin slices. And it is going to be delicious, delicious. Oh yes, another thing you can use if you want to kill that taste of gluten is a little bit of olive water, just a little bit, because otherwise it's going to taste like olives. I mean, if you're okay with the taste of olives, <laughs> but just a little bit, it's going to give you that delicious flavor is what we did here. We added rosemary. We're adding garlic. That is what's going to make it super delicious. And when you cut this, oh my God, so good. So good. We will be steaming this. You can't put it in the oven, but I find that if you put it in the oven, it'll dry up on you. Wrap it up and steam it. Okay, so we have a little piece of garlic there. And we're going to put a little piece of garlic here. And that's good. Okay. Now we're going to roll this up. And as we roll, we're going to put a little bit of mustard. Roll a little bit of mustard. Okay. Here we go. Okay. and you could roll it onto your flour just makes everything come together 
Now we're going to get, oh, let me just tuck that in, some garlic. Okay, we're going to get some rice paper and we're going to wet it. Okay, down it goes. Yeah, we'll do it this way. And we're going to put some, where did my mustard go? My mustard. I oh, heard this. Okay. We're going to put that there. And we're going to wrap it up, turn it over like this. A little more mustard on this one. I just ran them underwater, guys. And if you want, you can maybe add some, a little bit of beet there. There we go. And we're gonna put it there. And we're gonna roll it that way. Ooh. Okay. Just gonna cut this. I should put you in camera. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna cut it in half for the butt ends. Okay. And just put it, it will kind of stick to itself. There we go. Okay, perfect. And that is your delicious roast, okay? We're gonna put a little bit of olive oil. There we go. Okay. You can wrap that up if you want, or you can simply do this, a little this. And we are going to just gonna wrap it up like this for now. Okay. Okay. This is only gonna tighten up once I put the aluminum paper. All right. All right. It's always good to use the heavy duty aluminum paper. Okay, twist. Twist this side. Okay, and we're gonna bend it in. It's gonna be nice and tight for you. If you want a more not as tight, you can loosen it up just a little bit, but I have to fit in a smaller pot because I'm too lazy to wash dishes and I'm only going to use my small pot to do this. So I'll show you which pot I'm using. I want to get the bottom of my pot dirty with oil because it's going to be a mess otherwise. Okay, so we have water that just goes over my rim a bit. And if it goes up more than it should, it's not so bad. As long as you keep the seam standing up. This on this side. And where's my roast? Here's my roast. And we're going to put my roast on this side. There you go. Nice and snug. And we're going to first bring it to a boil. And then we're going to simmer it on low for 60 minutes, guys. Turn my oven on my stove on high and I am gonna cover it with a lid and bring that to a boil and as soon as it boils I am gonna lower it to a simmer a very low simmer lid that's how easy it is it took longer because here I am chatting away but you'll see what a delicious roast you're gonna make for your family 
Erica can't seem to get enough of this. And not just Erica, me too. I'm going to put myself in this one too. But it is so good. Uh, there's so little oil in it that it looks like there is a lot because I coated the outside. But really, in reality, when you take a slice or two slices of this, it, there's so little fat. And gain weight if you're worried about it. If anything, you're, you're doing a very high protein, except for the, uh, well, even the mushrooms, believe it or not, has more protein than any other uh, vegetable. I know that mushrooms, by the way, is not a vegetable or a meat. So it's the in-between creature. I love mushrooms. I put mushrooms in everything. You could even make a delicious mushroom gravy and you could cut this over the holidays, guys. You could just slice this up, put a gravy on top, some nice vegetables on the side. You could serve this or just lay it down on a platter all cut up with a drizzle, with a with some uh some delicious uh mushroom gravy and you can serve this over the holidays or just use it for sandwiches it is so so good you can always change it up instead of using my chicken powder uh, you could do my beef if you want uh, if you have bought um, chicken powder or mushroom powder you can use that instead it's really up to you this is what I did use it's my homemade stuff and it comes out really good so you have recipes for some of my um, my seasonings go ahead and try it and see how you like it my water is boiling so I am gonna lower now to a simmer that's it Alexa put a timer for one hour one hour starting now so there you go anyhow so very easy to make this stuff and if you don't have in the ingredient if you don't have the ingredients at home and you have either a bouillon mix uh, maybe you can mix some of that with the milk and then use that as seasoning. Uh, there's so many things you can use. But the trick really is the rosemary you're going to put in there. The fresh garlic slices. Uh, that's going to bring out that pork flavor that you normally get when you make a pork roast. I don't know if you've ever had a porchetta. It has that sort of flavor and taste. Really, really good. Basically... It's like I made a little porchetta. That's what I did. Vegan porchetta. And I swear to God, you guys will love it without hurting the little porchetta, right? <laughs> All right, guys. Good morning. Okay, we're going to continue with the roast. I would have normally have done this yesterday, but things came up. I put it in the fridge. This is just fine. If you don't have time to brown it, say you want to do this for the holiday, you could do this ahead of time. You could keep it wrapped the way it is, and when you're ready, either for Christmas, uh, Thanksgiving for the Americans, you can simply pull it out, brown it, heat it up a bit, and you've got yourself a delicious roast. So we're going to start off with our dressing. We're going to take olive oil. You can use any oil you want. We're gonna put this. Uh, this is I mixed it already with maple, but you could add more maple if you want, more mustard. We are gonna add some rosemary to this. We're gonna do some cracked pepper. There we go, and we're gonna use, you don't have to, but I have this delicious, it's, it's a salt that's infused with mushroom flavor. Again, you don't have to. And we're gonna put this aside and put it on low on my stove, just to get it going. Well, actually, I'm gonna put it on medium. Okay, we're going to close this up. Let me just go wash my hands. And we're going to open this up. I try not to break my paper so I could use it again. The same thing with the parchment, but I must have put it in a very special place. 
or my husband must have used it when we were gone to cook potatoes on. Okay, so here's our beautiful roast. Okay. Let's use this one more time. And I don't want to put this on high because what's going to happen is everything is going to burn in the pan. The maple is going to start getting dark. We want to do this slowly. And of course, we want to put a little bit of garlic. But you don't want to put this on high because the garlic is going to burn on you. You can also do this in the oven if you want. And just once in a while, just glaze it. And you got yourself a delicious little roast for the holidays or just to make kind of it. I'm going to pull out my smoker because a lot of people do, don't have a smoker at home. So I am going to get my mist heat and I'm going to use a little bit of that in here and that will give it that smoky flavor that you want. And that's optional, right guys? You don't need to. Oh, smells so good. And that's how simple it is to make a beautiful roast, guys. So later on, Erica's going to come down. We're going to have a nice sandwich each. And we're going to make a sandwich with this beautiful roast. And we're going to show you what it looks like. Maybe I'll cut it before she comes down so you can see what it looks like. My father, when he used to make us his famous pork chops, he used to slice apples. And it would be the most delicious meal ever. So, just because we're not using animal pork chops, doesn't mean we can't do this with our faux pork roast. Or like us Italians would call it porchetta. Okay. get a smoker. The smoker is a lot better, guys, but for now, we're doing it this way. And there is our beautiful roast, guys. Very simple to make. 
You can make this ahead of time and then brown it later. You could heat it up later. Uh, but yes, we're going to use it as a cold cut this morning. Well, not this morning, this afternoon. But very simple. You could cook some beautiful apples on the side. That's the way my father used to cook his pork meat. And this is a holiday porqueta that I make for my family. And I wanted to share it with you. I had a pork meat that I made, but this one is a lot better than the last one. And the longer you stay vegan, the more creative you get. And how simple was this, really? And uh, you could have this prepared for your family to have sandwiches. You could make it as a holiday dish. It's really up to you. And the baked apples really go nice if you're going to use it as a roast. We're going to use it as a sandwich meat. But I just wanted to show you that you could get pretty creative when it comes to uh, vegan meats and you can satisfy meat eaters along with non-meat eaters. So this is a great dish you can make over the holidays. And if you do give it a try, come back. Let me know what you, what you think, if you liked it. I'm going to cut this so you can actually see what it looks like inside. I just need my cutting board. Oh. Okay, I just need a knife. Mm. This looks amazing. That's what the meat looks like inside. It's gonna be delicious in sandwiches or if you're going to use it as, as a roast. But there is your beautiful meat, guys. So I hope you give this a try. Let me know what you think. I'm going to cut me a slice to try. Hold on, let me cut it nice and thin because I'm going to have some later on with Erica. Mm. And there it is. Look at this. Beautiful. Mm. My God. I wish you could taste it. It's so tender. You taste the garlic, you taste the rosemary. Mm. The mustard. Really, really good. Mm. Delicious. I'm going to put a little piece of apple on this. Mm. Michael. Even better. All right, guys. I'm going to say I love you. And if you give this a try, let me know what you think. And don't forget, if you share it, if you like the video, you're going to help my channel. And if you give this beautiful uh, piece of meat a try, vegan meat, of course, Come back, let me know what you think. And I'm going to say I love you. And I'm going to see you soon in another video.